Hello and welcome to another walkthrough by Commander Rogden from Rogden Gaming. We are currently on the Thieves Guild questline part 3, about to start the quest Speaking with Silence, which begins at the Snowvale Sanctum, the closest location being Winterhold, which can be reached by heading along this road. until you reach this well-hidden path over here, straight towards your objective. Once you have encountered Mercer and gone through his optional dialogue, you want to enter this indentation here and wait for Mercer to open the catacombs. Your first encounter will come out of this coffin, as well as this coffin here, as soon as you open this chest. Once you have dealt with those enemies, you'll want to activate this chain and open up the door behind you. Ensure that you eliminate this draugr before stepping behind this gate and pulling this chain. Before stepping into the next room, make sure to get rid of these bear traps as well as the draugr patrolling this hallway. Don't forget to kill these obviously badly hidden enemies. I recommend shooting these enemies as opposed to taking out the trap above, as Mercer will undoubtedly set it off. However, if he doesn't, you can activate it yourself to get it out of the way. Kill the final one in here, and pull this chain to continue. There are a couple of ways that you can handle this next area. The first is that you may enter this room and pick off all of the enemies below or you may enter this hallway and slaughter them at your leisure. As there are a significant number of them around here, I suggest the former. Either way, you will wish to pass through this room here, where you must attempt to avoid hitting these bones, or they will wake the Draugr. However, if Mercer is an idiot, which he frequently is, he may have already entered and alerted them all. Additionally, if you missed the sneak skill book from two missions ago, you can find it here. Once you have cleared out the room, you'll want to head up these stairs, through this hallway here, to locate your next guild trinket. You can probably guess what's going to happen here. However, as we do not have any sand, you'll want to loot the items around the area. Ensure that Mercer is not blocking your path out. Take the ship and run. When you enter this next area, you may ch to fight the Draugr hiding, or you may choose to sneak by. However, as you must sneak very close to this enemy here, I do not recommend this route unless your sneak is very high, as alerting him will alert all of the Draugr in the entire area. Additionally, touching these bone chimes will also alert the Draugr in this area. In order to avoid doing so, you may activate the chest from beyond the trap. Assuming you chose to avoid killing anything, you must activate this chain when this Draugr is too far away to be hit by these poison arrows, or that Mercer is standing in front of the door, and then close the gate again. Note that there is a pressure plate in front of the door that may also set off the arrows. As soon as you open this door, it will alert two Draugr up top, which you can completely avoid if you wish. However, you will want to make your way to the back of this area so that you can learn the Disarm Word of Power. Avoiding them may be the best option, as they are both quite powerful. However, if you do choose to kill them, do not forget to loot the chest up top. After another short sequence, and another impossible action by an NPC, Mercer's true colors will soon be revealed. My arrow was tipped with a unique paralytic poison. It slowed your heart and kept you from bleeding out. Had a Mercer. We were an anonymous splinter of the Thieves Guild in Riften. Perhaps I'll tell you... After Carlia goes over a revealing dialogue and provides you with three random potions as your reward, she will direct you to speak to a mage in Winterhope. The mage we are looking for is Anther, who is in the Frozen Hearth. Carlia, do you have Gallus' journal? Problem? No, this is just... He's written all of the text. No. The court wizard of Markarth, Calselmo, 
and they have the materials you need to get this journal translated. According to Enther, the person we're looking for is Calcimo, who is located in the Unders, which is a building that you can access from Markarth. Once you have explained the situation to Calcimo, he will provide you with a number of options. Bribing him, or intimidating him, will both always automatically fail. Persuading him requires a very difficult check. However, if you happen to have done the Agent of Mara quest, you can automatically get him to agree by reminding him of your assistance with Feline. It, however, may be important to note that once you exit his conversational options, you'll no longer have the ability to request the key from him. The only other way to acquire it is to complete his quest regarding the excavation site. Alternatively, you could simply steal the key from him. However, the guards in the first area will be hostile to you, and as they count as city guards, will add to your bounty if you are detected. For this reason, I recommend convincing him to give you the key. The persuasion check can be managed by purchasing potions, activating the shrine to develop, or gifting to a beggar. When the guards are not hostile, it is also considerably easier to steal the items inside many of these display cases. However, perhaps the most important item you will wish to acquire is this stone of Baron Zaya. Once you are satisfied that you have stolen everything you can, you can enter Calcimo's laboratory, where all of the guards are automatically hostile. However, the wizard guards do not add any bounty, and we'll discuss entertaining ways to kill them, as well as ways to avoid them. The first fun you can have is stealing the spider control rod. You can point the rod to a specific location, and the spider will travel there, which can serve as a distraction, or you can utilize some of the many traps. Sneaking past them without killing them is considerably more difficult. You may do so when they both turn their back to you and head it down this doorway, where you can find the key on top of this dresser. Your best chance to avoid detection is to wait by this pillar for them both to patrol together, and then slip past when they're both facing the other way. As the patrol of these two guards up ahead is very tight, you may find it nigh impossible to sneak by this way. To get around this, you may instead head down this hall, where you will encounter a death trap if you are not careful. In order to bypass this area without dying, you must pick up and lift this body. Carry it over and drop it on this switch. You will then find it safe to travel through this area. This will then place you on the other side of the platform, or you can choose to slaughter these two guards. Turning the valve again will shut them off, which will allow you to pass through this little area here to a master lock chest. Alternatively, you could let them live and simply sneak to that area instead. The following room will contain one patrolling guard and one apparently having his lunch. You'll want to wait for this guard to continue her patrol back before sneaking to the door. Turning this valve will kill the patrolling guard, but Isanter may escape and will return in force, so I recommend just killing him with normal weaponry. If you wish to avoid killing anyone, it is recommended that you possess the silence perk from the sneak tree. Regardless of your decision, you may wish to read this enchanting skill book and steal the contents of this chest on its table. Avoiding the guard is relatively simple as long as you pay attention to his patrol. To avoid a Santa, it is recommended that you hop up on this enchanting table and creep around this pillar. Additionally, before leaving, do not forget to take the puzzle cube as your guild trinket to Delvin. If you wish to gain the items on the other side of this area here, you can use Whirlwind Sprint to dash across. Once you enter this research area, the first thing you may wish to do is pick up a roll of paper and some charcoal. There is a heavy armor skill book on this table as well, if you are interested. And ensure that you have adequately looted everything that you plan to before going to your objective. Which will prompt a scene where Isanter and three guards will show up to search the area. If you kill Icanter, instead a fourth guard will be in its place. 
If four guards show up, it will be considerably easier to avoid them, though you will likely simply kill them anyways. If I Santer shows up, he will take position on that seat, and he will not move for the entire period of their search. The easiest way to escape here without alerting anyone is to wait for the captain to begin his patrol and then creep by our blind mage. With the charcoal drawings in hand, you'll want to head down this path on the right of when you exit, and leap down this waterfall. Once you've taken your leap of faith off the water, you'll want to head to the basement of the frozen hearth. Once you return with a Falmer dialect, Anther will begin his translation of Gallus's journal. An unduly lavish lifestyle replete with spending vast amounts of gold on personal... Gallus seems certain that Mercer had been removing funds from the guild's treasury without anyone's knowledge. So repeatedly mentions his strong belief that Mercer desecrated something known as the Twilight Sepulchre. Once Anther has finished going over his grave news, you can then speak with him again, and he will act as your fence in Winterhold. For Riften and scout the situation, see if I can discover what Merce is up to. When you're ready, meet me at the Ragged Flagon. Following up with her desire to meet you at the Ragged Flagon, she provides you with the sword that Mercer was using in the dungeon. The Nightingale Blade, a leveled sword. Note that this reward does not change based on how many guards you did or did not kill. Nor does killing Isanter have any bearing over the completion of your quest. Upon returning to the Thieves' Guild, you will find that the cistern is locked, which means that you must enter through the Ratway, where Carlyle will approach you and insist that you confront the other members. It is true. Delvin, I'll need you to open the vault. Impossible. Could he pick his way in? door has the best puzzle locks. It's gone. Everything's gone. Get in here, all of you. After you have discovered that the vault is empty, Brynjolf will indicate that you need to search for evidence that Mercer betrayed the guild. If you continue with his additional dialogue, he will provide you with the optional objective to speak with Vex, as well as an alternative way to enter. Vex will reveal to you that Vald has a debt with Maven, and your optional objectives will update to speak with her. Note that you may speak with Vald through the gate, or pick his pocket. There are three ways that you can go about getting inside. The first is to lift the key from his person, and open the gate when he is adequately far enough away. The second is that you may pick this expert lock gate. Using either option, you may kill or avoid him. Note that if you choose not to kill him, lowering the plank will alert him to your presence. And you should wait for your reticule to return to hidden before proceeding. The third method of resolving this is speaking with Maven Blackbriar. safely, and it ended up at the bottom of Lake Honric. The wizards called it the Quill of Gemination, and demanded a tremendous. According to Maven, the Quill can be found in a wreckage near the Golden Glow Estate. Returning the Quill to Maven will free Vald of his debt and allow you to pass by peacefully. Can't believe it. Never mind. Uh, here, you did me a favor. Inside of Mercer's home, there are two bandits. Though, as they are both facing directions that have nothing to do with the quest, you can certainly avoid them. Once you have looted what you need in here, though there is not much, you should open this suspicious cabinet and the false panel. The next area has many traps. The first, which can be avoided by walking like so. Around the corner will be some poison arrows. A little further, we will encounter a room with several axes. As there is nothing to detect you down here, I do not recommend sneaking, and simply dash to this barrel. As the chandelier is in an awkward position and will block your path, you will want to run along the right side. There is one final trap before you open the last door which will launch several arrows at you if you open it without removing the trigger. In Mercer's room, we will find a chest, a guild trinket, a bowl full of gems, his plans, a sneak skill book, and the leveled weapon, Chillrend. To quickly return to the Ragged Flagon, you could head down this hallway and drop down this hole. Shore's beard. He's going after the eyes of the Falmer? 
That was... If he gets his hands on them, you can be for how the guilds treated her. Now she wishes to... Once you return the information to Brynjolf, the guild will unanimously decide to kill Mercer, which prompts the next quest that we will be dealing with next time. And wrapping this up, we will return to Delvin oh, well. to hand in the it trinkets that we found. This completes our walkthrough for the Thieves Guild questline part 3. The quest Speaking with Silence, Hard Answers, and The Pursuit. This has been Commander Rogden. Thanks for watching.